I did. I don't know if it's 1.30 or 2.30. But I will tell you this. <coughs> if you're going to come to Christ, you need to come as you are. Amen. And in that, as the words I just shared with you, that means you try in Christ to do what he wants for you in your life. Amen. Come as you are. Come as you are. If you would this morning, turn with me to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 40. Well, our text is actually out of 48. I could read that to you this morning. We could start there in Luke 48. This story is also in, is in Matthew and Mark as well, and all three, three of the four Gospels. But in Luke chapter 8, verse 48, I lost my verse back there. Anyway, be of good cheer, your faith is made well. That was our text this morning, and I'd like to share verses 43 through 48 with you this morning. It starts off kind of rough, but don't be concerned. It's a great story. It's a beautiful story of faith. In verse 43, it starts out with, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, a multitude throng you, press you, and you say, Who touched me? Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Listen to these words. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Father God, thank you for this story this morning. God, thank you for this example, this instruction. Let us glean all the parts that we can out of it in this time factor this morning, God, in this time frame, and let it bless our hearts to realize that who we are is who you want. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. There is a very key fact, or an act, if you will, as come as you are. Come as you are. I almost wanted to lame this sermon just flat cracked up. <laughs> cracked up, I thought, would relate a little bit better. But come as you are is where we're at because there's a condition that you need in order to come as you are. And that is to admit that you are absolutely messed up. Amen. This is the greatest sermon that I ever get to preach because it talks about who we really are. It also talks about who God really is and what he does for us when we accept who we are in ourselves. Because that is really the battle of accepting the fact that I am totally cracked up. Cracked up. Cracked up It can mean many things. It can mean to have a mental breakdown, Joe. It can mean that. It can have to, she, she is so cracked up. She, she just cracked up one day. Ever said that? She just went off the deep end. She lost it. That was just before she got out of the house with all the kids. It can mean blow, uh, to, <laughs> it can mean to go nuts, to go bonkers. It can also mean to laugh hysterically. And I was thinking about that. If you've got somebody laughing hysterically and cracked up, you probably got a dose of crazy that you may not be able to get away from. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but either one could be, his, his jokes really crack me up. But either way, it's, so, it's one of those things that going together, and, and it, it, it comes back to the fact that we could be a bunch of cracked pots at that point, right? Hmm? My first thought of this word cracked up, I thought about an old plate, right? An old antique plate or just the, 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 a plate that you might use. Something that's made out of glass or crystal or clay. But if you've ever been antique shopping, anybody in here been antique shopping or junk shopping, whichever one you want to call it? It's a fine line between antiques and junk, isn't it? It really is. It's rusty and it's old or it's valuable. I never knew the difference. Scotty, I, I never really did. It, just, it looked old, right? But in an when you see that, you see an old plate, it's got all those chip marks and cracks in it from use and wear. Aren't we symbolically a lot like that as we get older? Hmm? A lot of cracks. Huh? A lot of chip marks. We're just hoping that we can limp along. We're, we're durable yet fragile, right? Man, we are durable. We can take a hit and keep on ticking, as they say, right? But we can be also fragile too, right? We can fall in, in emotional and spiritual and physical. We can have total breakdowns at some point in our life, right? I was thinking on a scale of 1 to 10 of being totally cracked up. 1 to 10. We probably live around what? Seven? Seven? Somebody already went to ten, right? <laughs> I was going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you could get to ten on any given day, but most of the time we live around five to seven in the chaos that we live in, right? Just kind of, I'm on a scale of one to ten, I'm about a seven on the cracked up scale, Joe. 
on the broke scale. I'm just, some days, but you get playing cra crazy. Some people even set new extreme levels of that, just kind of be to, to, to better themselves, to do their personal best, to just be extra crazy on some days. Broken. The funny part is, if you're comparing your level of crazy to a fellow member, right? If you're comparing your level of crazy, of your level of cracked up, of your level of brokenness to a family member, I look at Deborah, I don't know why. <laughs> to another family member, maybe to a friend or to a co-worker, that doesn't mean you're winning. Just saying. Doesn't mean you're winning. But here's the cool part. Here's the best part. To deny how cracked up we are, how broken we are. Right? To deny that. That brokenness is the greatest miss conception that we can ever have, right? Can you turn this thing down a little bit? I'm going to go in, boss. Because to deny ourselves the truth, maybe up a little bit. <laughs> maybe not quite that drastic. There you go. Come up. There you go. Is that, y'all hear me okay? All right. It was, I thought it was just my head, but there's a lot of things in my head today, so it could have been voices, right? Because to deny ourselves the truth, we are, it is to deny ourselves the truth of who he is. That's within the essence of this whole message, if there was any this morning. When we don't really take ourselves and say, this is who I am, this is all of who I am, all of the broken, the luggage, everything that I've got, everything that I'm at at this point in my life, we deny him the ability to fix us. Amen. 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 I was thinking, nobody ever comes home and says, well, I better get busy cleaning this house. It's so clean. <laughs> nobody ever goes outside and says, I just washed the truck and it looks so clean, I think I'll wash it again, right? Huh? That's W-A-R-S-H. That's an East Texas term, wash. I'm sorry. Right? Nobody, nobody ever, no one ever cleaned up something that wasn't messed up to start with, right? Because there's nothing to what? There's nothing to clean up. This is what I want you to know this morning. Christ did not go to the cross to provide a clean, a cleanup for a perfect people, right? He didn't put himself on the cross. He did not bear our sins and our issues and our problems all at one time so that we could continue to what? Be perfect, right? Because we're not perfect, are we? See, the honesty of it is, is when you really come to salvation, many people say it's a thing that I don't want to go to God because I don't want God to affect my life. When many times what we really realize is that we take who we are and all the things that we have and we give it to him and we say, God, here, I don't want this anymore. And in that perfection of him, he gives us the ability to say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. See, there's the deal. He went to the cross because being cracked up is who we are. Hmm? He went to the cross for that because being healed up is what he does. Amen. 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 Embrace your crazy and get some Jesus. Amen. I don't know if that's a good bumper sticker. I almost didn't put it in there. I thought somebody might find that a bit blasphemous. But I'm just saying, in some points, embrace who you are so that Christ can be who he is in your life. Because until you do, you can't truly have acceptance of salvation. There's no way you can get there. Look at our verse this morning. Uh, this story, again, is in Matthew, Mark, and as well in, in uh, Luke and verse 8. Verse 43 or 48, it says, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Be of good cheer. That's why I ask you every Sunday morning when you come in, do you resemble something, does God resemble anything in your life? Is there any, 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 any evidence of Christ in your life? Any outside of this building, right? Because that is our sole purpose as Christians is to let this shine through. Again, that's like I said this morning, do you have issues? Uh-huh. Are you cracked? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And depending on your age and time and, and all that, you have some have more cracks than others. It's like that guy in you know, that commercial that said he talked about, he said this operation and that operation, and this removed and that healed and that, and that healed and that healed and that healed and that fixed. It's kind of like as we get older, right? You want to compare how, many, how much our brokenness is, how, how cracked we really are? Because the list can get extensive, can't it? But see, that very list that we carry around with us sometimes is the very list that God said, here, if you'll just drop that off right here, hmm, I'll take care of that. I just take care of that. Sometimes we pick that list back up and we put it back on and we even add items to the list as we get older, don't we, Bernie? Yes, hmm? we, do. we just keep on adding and we're like, why do I have a list? Because, see, my Father God said, if I'll come to him and say, Father God, here, take this, please. See, that's the simplicity of Christianity. God, I love you and this is who I am. And he says, yeah, I know. I know you. I've known you. Hmm? What I need you to do is just give me your list. Not keep a list. Huh? A lot of us come into relationships with what they call that. What's that word? Baggage. Baggage. I came into, I came into the relationship with a lot of baggage. Why? Hmm? If it's a new relationship, why did you bring the baggage? Hmm? You see, when you come to Christ, he's already paid for the baggage. Right? 
So if he's already paid for the baggage, why do you keep carrying it around with you? He paid the price for it. He said, I'll take care of all that. I'll take that away. Why do you want to bring it with you? Well, I need to hang on to this. It makes me feel good. Then you're not really going to get the full blessing of Christ. Amen? You really won't. See, it said in here, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Your faith in him. The story this morning, the lady, right? Her ability to believe in Christ made her well. That's the same thing that you said when you accepted Christ. If you're a Christian this morning and you have made a profession of faith that you told him that I believe in you. I believe in you and I believe what you'll do in my life. And in that, I give you control of my life. I don't lie in church. How many people will say that this morning? I give you control of my life, Jesus. Huh? Don't answer out loud. But think about the statement. I give you control of my life. I give you my life, God, because I believe in you. Your faith will make you well. It will make you whole. Your abilities? No, that's the good part. Your strength? No, that's the good part. Your brilliance? Absolutely not. No. No, thank goodness, because I would have failed, right? That was a big test. I failed. I didn't, I didn't pre-study. I didn't study the night before, right? I would have failed. No, your faith is believing that being cracked up is who I am and being healed up is what he does. Your faith in him allows you this freedom. Your faith in him allows you that freedom that you can take all your brokenness, all the crazy, all the cracked, everything that's in your life, good or bad, and you can give it to him. That's what you should have done in salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go look at this story a little closer. Now, in verse 43, it says, Now a woman having a, a flow of blood. This is having an internal hemorrhaging. Not a great sermon for this morning, right before lunch, right? But it is what it is. She was hemorrhaging for 12 years, this lady. And she spent all of her livelihood, that word is income, everything that she could earn on physicians and doctors. Does that sound like the 21st century in America? Huh? Sign me up, doc. I want everything you got. All 4,762 bills, pills, and whatever else I can get because I need you to heal me. Hmm. It goes on to say that she couldn't be healed by any. Came And she came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. She was healed. She was healed. Think about that. That's the hymn. Right? That's the hymn. If you got one this morning, you've got a cuff or a sleeve, think about it. That's what she touched. Right? That's what she touched. Note to this uh, reality of this single verse in comparison to our lives. Think about it into our lives. A person afflicted and in pain spent her life seeking every option known to man. Huh? See, sometimes we have things in our life that we need to take to a higher level. Right, Rivers? Something better, right? I've got something better. I need to lift it up to who? Jesus Christ. I don't have an answer for this. 1.30 this morning, I had a lot of things on my plate I didn't have an answer for. And finally, in that comfort, I felt those same warmth and feeling in him that, that just lay back, Tim. Let him have it. doesn't mean I'm not concerned. It doesn't mean that I'm not trying. It doesn't mean that I'm still good. It means I'm going to give it to him. See, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me, but I believe that he can. In this very same mercy, she spent all of her spare time, all of her money, hoping and seeking to find relief before she came to Christ. She had tried everything. Are we not similar, right? How many, time, how many times do we go to people and say, let me tell you what's going on in my life, Brother Clevenger. What do you think? Joe, what do you think? This is what's going on in my life. What do you think? Terry, this is what's going on in my life. What do you think? Well, I got there three. Let me get some more. Paula, what do you think? What's just going on in my life? Right? Barbara, this is what's going on in my life. What do you think? I don't want to. I already know your opinion. <laughs> just give it to Jesus. <laughs> but how many people do we talk to? Huh? How many co-workers do we go to? Before we just simply get down on our knees and say, God, i got this problem. It don't even have to be a problem. It could just be a concern. It could be an issue. It could be something coming up. God, I need, I just want to put this, I want you to relieve. What did it say? Go in peace. Why? Because your faith has made you well. You say, well, Tim, I, I got saved, but I still got all these physical problems. Patience. Because if you believe the part that said you're saved, then you believe the part that he's coming back or you're going to him and one or the other, you get a new body. Amen. Huh? See, we forget the other half of the story because in America, we want it right now. I want it now. Can't have it now. I'm going to go do it my way. Patience. Patience. You have a good and loving father. Patience. Right? Patience. There's some things that we have to go through. There's some valleys that we have to go through. There's some things that we deal with because of sin in this world that we have to deal with. But in that, we are given freedom and salvation that we know the promise is true because I have a new body coming. Right? One that doesn't hurt. Hmm? One that doesn't break my heart. Huh? Come on now. 
No tears. Right? Hmm? That's the promise. But so many times we just get stuck right here, don't we, Mike? We just get stuck right here. I, I want it now. He said, have faith. Have faith. See, please understand. Here's another deal I want you to understand this morning. Oh, God is not necessarily a prayer. Hmm? Oh, God is not necessarily a prayer. Oh, God, with no belief, let me just break it to you gently, is just some words. Huh? Many people, when they fall down and shout dramatically, Oh, God, in drama of a certain moment of life, I need you, God. Oh, God, please save me, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. But here's the fact of life. God knows your heart. And if they're just words that you're shouting at that moment, it's not really a prayer. And God's listening. But the question is, are you really praying? Hmm? See, you could just shout out, Oh, Mary. Or, Oh, Larry. Or there used to be a candy bar called Old Henry. At least you'd have the satisfaction of getting a chocolate to eat a candy bar. Hmm? Because if there's no heart, no conviction of heart, then there is no relationship. Shout, oh God, all you want to, but it's not necessarily a prayer. King David said in Psalms 139 too, he said, God knows when you, we sit down and when we rise up, he discerns our thoughts from afar. Hmm? What's that old saying, Danny? Shame, shame uh, easy for you to say. You were a good person. Hmm? <laughs> Lie to me, shame, uh, what? never mind, moving on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shame on me once, shame on you twice. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Psalms 44, 21. We, we would, we, uh, would not God find this out? For he knows the secrets of our heart. I'm not preaching fear this morning. What I'm trying to do is awake you. I hear all these, this word in the public being awoke, coming alive and realizing all the things going on. Let me tell you this morning, if you want to come alive and realize all the things coming on, arise, aware, be awareness, have awareness, increase your awareness of who you are in God and what God knows about you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't hold him over to the other side and say, well, God, when I need you, I'll shout out, oh, God, and you come running. He's not that God. His name's not Rover or Grover. Huh? I'm, I'm trying to tell you a serious truth because a lot of people, that's what they think. Come on, God, here, here, fetch. Ooh, I don't want to stand before him someday and say, when did you call on me? I'm sorry, I don't know you. But I called your name so many times. I don't know you. Why? Because you never had conviction of heart. And why is it so hard? When I started this, I told you the very same truth. You bring what you have. It doesn't matter how messed up it is. Matter of fact, the more messed up it is, the better it shines through because you have more cracks. Huh? Man. See, God doesn't shine through solid surfaces. You didn't know that, did you? Hmm? No, he doesn't go through, the, through solid surfaces. He goes through cracked surfaces. And the beauty of it is when you take all of the people in this room this morning and everyone on this side and you put them all together, your cracks might be slightly different in mine, but when you combine them together, the God, he magnifies the light of himself through that Amen. to light this world around us. That is the blessings that God gives you. That is your purpose in life. Again, do you know him? Hmm? In Romans 7, 18, Paul said, For I know that in me, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. Oof. Nothing. For to will is present within me, but to how to perform what is good I do not find in my physical self. Oh, I, I'm very, I'm a good person. I'm a very, very good person. Hmm? I am. What are you laughing about, Deborah? I am a good person. I'm a very good person. See, Paul said, I search myself with that, and without the strength of God in my life, I have no hope against the decisions that I will make because the physical is stronger than me. The physical is still there. Even after salvation, the physical is still there. I need God. I need that conviction of heart. Many people say, well, that's bad if God's convicting you. No, that's good if God's convicting you because that shows you like a good, good father how much he loves you because he's saying, please, don't go down that road. Amen. Come back over here. I've got something better for you over here. You're like, nope, I'm going to keep pulling. Don't. That's the conviction of heart. That's when you have him here. That's the beauty that you have to relax. Say, man, I'm a total mess, Scotty. I'm all over the place. Burn. I don't know what to do with myself most days. Right? I don't know if I'm coming or going. I'm totally messed up. And the good part is, God still uses me every day. Huh? That's the beautiful part. Butch is checking because he knows he, 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 that's where he's at, right? Butch said, I'm more messed up than duct tape and super glue couldn't put me back together. Hmm? 
See, only in Christ do I have conviction to seek his direction and correction because I don't see it as a negative. I see it as a blessing because I see it as a relationship where my Father God loves me. Amen. He wants me to know these things. Hmm? He wants me to know these things. Romans 7, 15 said, For what I am doing, Paul again, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I hate to do. Let me ask you this morning, are you still the same person that you were before you said you accepted Christ? Huh? Are you, you read the same books? You watch the same television? You eat or drink the same foods? You attend the same social events? You have the same vocabulary? Hmm? Has anything changed in your life? Hmm? I hope a lot has, right? Why? Because conviction of heart says, I don't want to live this way anymore. I want to live this way. Amen. See, now I have a rule book. I realized I was blind before, but now I have a rule book that says, here's how I should live. It's not one of judgment. It's not one of condemnation. It's one of love. Please don't run into the street. Please don't run with scissors. Please don't eat glue, whatever it is, right? Mm, glue's not good for you. This story this morning, consider in, the, in this situation, do you have conviction of heart? Again, because conviction is not a bad thing. It's not. But I'm going to tell you this right now. And somewhat, if you allow me to be coarse a little bit, if you're still scratching the same itch on the same post that you had before you came to Christ, you need to check your salvation. Amen? Amen. See, he removes the niche for the itch, right? Understand, God has a plan, especially time, just for you. Even in a world of 8 billion people, he knows you. He knows you. Look back at verse 45 this morning in Luke chapter 8. Jesus said what? Who touched me? Who touched me? If you go back and recall verse 40, uh, 43 or uh, uh, 40, uh, Jesus was coming uh, into a, a crowd of people, a multitude of people. It was packed. Uh, the, 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 the scripture verse says throng. Throng is a, it means densely packed. People were all around Christ at this point trying to get his attention. In that moment, they were touching him and grabbing and pulling and saying, Oh God, Jesus, Jesus, hear me. Jesus, see me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And can you imagine? See, they'd been in Capernaum and they were coming back to Galilee. Right? They were coming back to see a young girl that was dying. But in that process, he was trying to weave his way through this massive crowd of people. And everybody was calling and pulling on him and tugging. And in that moment, in the quietness of her heart and her faith, she reached out and just touched the cuff. She just touched the cuff. And Christ, being physically pulled and tugged in all the directions, said, Who touched me? Who has came to salvation? Who has faith to believe? Out of all these people all around me, hundreds of thousands of people, who touched me? Even the disciples found it unbelievable. Did they not? Read the passage. Peter said what? I mean, uh, yes, Peter said, Master, the multitudes press against you. They, 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 they're they, all around you. And you ask what? Who touched you? How in the world would you know, Revis? Right? How in the possible? How, how could you have felt one person? How could you have felt one? And Jesus said in verse 46, yes. And I'm going to add this in there so you have some idea of what he's talking about. In a world of 8 billion people this morning. He said, yes, somebody touched me for I perceived the power going out for me. And that power went out for me because someone actually believed. Hmm? See the difference? Huh? Jesus completely surrounded in a world of people that are throwing up, oh God, save me, oh God, I need you. But on occasion, in a moment, someone really believes in him and they touch him. And he cleanses them. Amen. You see, to understand this, how much more impactful this story is, at this time in history, if you had a blood problem, you were considered an unclean person. And as an unclean person, to touch someone was against the law because you could contaminate that person with your disease. See, we didn't have all the things we had today to deal with blood containment and all the things that we have, right? Yes. And that's how they treated them. Often as lepers, you were cast out. You were pushed away from the city. They didn't have a cure for it. So they said, you just live over there, but don't you touch anybody. But here's the beauty of Jesus Christ. In her efforts to reach out and to touch him, to be cleansed, to be, he cleansed her. Her concern, I might contaminate him. His promise, I'll cleanse her. Hmm? And that's how we are when we come to Christ, ladies and gentlemen. See, we come as we are. We come broken. 
We come with history, we come with baggage, we come with all sorts of things about us that we don't know. Why would anyone ever want to love me? Why would Jesus Christ give me eternal life? Why? I'm not deserving. At any given moment, I could have a breakdown. I could go crazy. I could set a new personal scale of being over 10 on the crazy scale. Hmm? I could just totally lose it, right? Anybody else here? Hmm? You ever been driving down the road, have a little road rage? Come on, we've talked about this before. Somebody cut you off in the parking lot, huh? You've been to church all day long. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I... Hmm? What? What? What just happened? Huh? Did the physical get loose? Because see, it's still here. Don't misunderstand me. You, again, like I said, you still have the desires of the heart, right? The flesh is strong. Somebody got my parking spot, right? That was my parking spot. Somebody cut me off. What comes out of your mouth? Come on now. Don't lie in church. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. You know what he does? It's gone. See, that relationship is very intimate. Look at verse 47. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden. Wow. You can't totally comprehend, but to let that sink in a little bit. Think about it this afternoon. Think about how powerful those words are. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down to him, no longer hidden, all of her past revealed, and all relieved. I'm no longer hidden. I don't misunderstand me. I don't totally care what you think about me. Now, as a society and a people, do we? Yes, we do. But you see, the fact of life... My life belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. Huh? Right? I've got a full-time job keeping my life in the direction Christ wants me to go. I don't need you directing me. Because last time I checked, you probably need to pay attention to what? Your own. Your own. Huh? Ooh, that sounds ugly, doesn't it? No, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm trying to be factual. See, no longer hidden. When I come to Christ, I was no longer hidden. I admitted who. If you ever want to come to my office, I'll tell you exactly who where I've been. I'll tell you exactly who I am. I'll tell you exactly without the power of God who I would be. But by the power of God, this is who I am now in Him. I may fail, but I'm going to try every day to live the way He wants me to live. By the grace and mercy of Christ. Amen? Amen. That's what we're talking about this morning. I'm no longer hidden. These words are so powerful. How personal is your relationship with Christ? It's intimate. You should have that kind of relationship with the Father. That you can tell Him anything. Because he already knows it in your heart anyway. But he's waiting for what? He's waiting for you to say, hey, I need to talk to you about this, God. I need to talk to you about this. I'm no longer hidden. I come to you, Father, from the shadows of my choices, from my sins or my burdens of my life. I come trembling, but in sobriety that I know who you are. And in that, I give you this list of things that I have, these problems. Why? Because I don't want them anymore. Understand this lady's concern, Right? She was afraid to touch him. But upon touching him, she was healed. She was absolutely healed. What a wonderful set of words to know that Jesus Christ looked down one day when you came to him and said, Who touched me? I, who touched me? I said, I did, Father. I did. I'm sorry. You know the things that I've done in my life. But it's not even about that. It's not about what I've done. It's about who I want to be. I'm tired of dragging this part. I'm tired of living in fear. Does, does the world around you not know? You know what I'm saying? All the things that are going on in our world today, aren't you just tired of dealing with them? All the fear? Huh? Does that mean you're not afraid of tornadoes? We had storms this week, right? Hmm? Does that mean you're not afraid of disease? Does it mean you're not afraid of your government? I'm equally afraid of all three of them. I lied. I'm more afraid of the last one. <laughs> right? But see, the difference is I refuse to live in fear. Amen. See the difference? Is it there? Yes, it's true. I could catch a disease tomorrow and die. But I'm not going to live in fear of that possibility. Why? Because I have a new life coming. A real life coming. One that transcends this mess I'm living in right now. That's the beauty of it. Now the woman saw that she was not hidden. She came trembling and falling down. She declared him to the presence of all the people for a reason. And that reason was so that people would know what? I'm a child of God. 
We're going to do baptism in a few minutes, and the whole purpose of baptism is to make a public profession of our faith. We accept Christ when we said, God, I believe. But I come before you this morning, and I go through this, require, this request of Christ to show that I am a Christian. The question I have for you this morning as we, as we start to close is, does the world around you have any idea that Christ is in you? Hmm? Does the world around you, does your family, your friends, your co-workers, the people that you run into, the strength, does anyone have any clue outside of this building that Christ lives within you? You say you're cracked. You say you came to Christ. You say you've been filled by Christ. Then how is it not like an isolating sprinkler? <laughs> Because hmm? I know the cracks I've got. I'm held together with Bondo. I know exactly what's holding me together, Jesus Christ. He filled the cracks, and in that, they come out, right? But my question to you this morning, does anyone know that you're a Christian? Do you have to tell them? Oh, yeah, I go to church. Oh, boy, that covers it. Huh? If you've been blessed by Christ to accept salvation and you say you believe, then how can you not Show Christ, does anyone know you outside this building? Huh? Do you have any boundaries or limits that witness to those around you your profession of Christ? Any? Any boundaries? Any limits? Everything goes? Huh? I'm talking conviction this morning now. Right? Does anything? Can they see your flaws? You should let them see them. Our church should be, be transparent with that, right? Nobody should walk in here and go, that was a bunch of cracked up crazy people in there. The pastor's the lunatic of them all. They're always talking about how Jesus saved their lives, how they made it better, the promise that they have. What are they talking about? What are they doing? What's wrong with those people? We know the power of God. Huh? Christianity is not about perfection. It's absolutely about brokenness. Hmm? It's absolutely about brokenness. In verse 48, again he said, Daughter, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Your faith has made... All well for you. Go in peace. Cracked up this morning means many things, but in the end, to deny yourself your brokenness, to deny to yourself who you really are. See, that's for me, that's salvation. Yes, there's the belief in God. Obviously, number one, number one, I believe in God. That's my book. But the honest step, the first step is just to say, I know who I am. And I accept this mess. And in that, I'm going to give it to Christ. Why? Because I'm tired of fighting it myself. I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of dealing with all the things that I get into. Because this is the thing. You can be deny yourself the brokenness, but the one true thing that sets you free, the one true thing that sets you free is showing the facts that you are flawed. It should be a great relief. I, I'm, I'm relieved every day. Every day when I put on the wrong shoe with the wrong sock. Every day I lose my car keys. Every day that I wander around aimlessly at 1.30 trying to figure out why it's 2.30. Every day. I thank God that he has saved me, that he has promised me a life better than what I have now. And it's not even the better part. It's just to know that I have life, that I will not have to spend my life in eternity living in worse than what this is. As a lot of wake last night trying to figure out whether again it was 2.30 a.m. or where 2.30 went, I still lost an hour someplace. I don't know where it went. I considered all of us, all the things that we don't have compared to the, to the bigger churches. I did... All the things we have been through since Barb and I came here. And we've been through a lot of things. And all I could think of, out of all of the things where you're not, are all of the cracks that we have, or all of the crack pots that we have. <laughs> but in that moment, filled with all the negativity Satan could provide, because he was dishing it out last night, I remembered one thing we do have. In our brokenness, we have God. We have God. We have God. We have God. Let the crack show. Let the blemish show. Embrace who you are in Christ and accept the blessings that he gives to us. Come as you are. Come as you are. It doesn't matter what you look like, where you've been, Huh? Come as you are. That's what he said. Come as your old daughter or son. Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Amen.
Father God, we come to you thanking you this morning for this lesson, God. These lessons that you put in the Bible that when we really have time to absorb them, God, and see the, all the, 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 the eloquence of the words and, and, the, and the tiny pieces that who touched me. God, to know that we're healed by you, that we're blessed by you. Father God, we come as we are to you. Thank you for all that you allow us. Thank you for the cross now, God. And now I pray that the Holy Spirit will turn to those who are in need, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 307.